Malaysia for many years has always, has always been very predictable in terms of how we do business. Uh, we're quite open, we facilitate uh, you know, engagement and we try to simplify processes. I think people like Maida, you know, we have a lot of agencies that work, I would say, 24-7 on trying to, you know, uh, make, uh, what do you call that, um, Malaysia an, an, an attractive uh, place to invest. But uh, at the same token, I think what actually draws, uh, you know, investment into Malaysia as well is the diversity of you know, the, the skill sets that we have. Um, of course, we are a very good English-speaking country. Um, a lot of our contracts, a lot of our discussions, a lot of our, our you know, uh, terms and conditions, uh, designs, you know, we, we actually do it in, 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 uh, uh, in English uh, and, and, in, and in some cases, of course, you know, translated either way, you know, from Malay to English or, to, or English to Malay. But uh, or Bahasa Malaysia rather. Um, but uh, the the other thing I think that the country has done well is that we've provided good infrastructure to support the you know the investments that uh, let's say uh, foreign companies you know can actually make in Malaysia. So uh, if if we look at the I think the long I would say thirty year history of the country actually moving more from an agricultural, you know, um, so-called uh, focused country to more of an industrial, more of a technology and a services con- country. We've actually put a lot of effort and a lot of thought in terms of what are the infrastructure and supporting uh, mechanisms that we have to put in place in order to do that. And I think generally Malaysians also, we have a very strong um, uh, if you like international presence, and uh, we also have got good international experience, you know, across the board, and therefore, you know, we understand what are the um, what are the challenges and what are the needs of you know investment that wants to come to Malaysia. So we we try to facilitate that. Like for example, in our Bausted Group, you know, we have we have partnerships with so many different uh, nationalities across the group. We've got, of course, IKEA, which is, you know, uh, Swedish. Um, you know, we, we're, we are dealing with the French on the submarines and the littoral combat ships. We have, you know, all sorts of different, uh, you know, um, relationships with uh, companies, agencies where we represent Norwegian technology and many things. So we, we, we understand the, uh, you know, we understand the, uh, the needs of, uh, of an international community. And I think we facilitate that quite well as a country. If you look at ASEAN uh, per se, aside from Indonesia, which is also a major producer of oil and gas, uh, we are pretty much you know, uh, also a significant uh, uh, player in, in that space. Now, I think what we've done is that uh, we have regulated the production of oil and gas you know, through the, production, uh, the Petroleum Development Act in 1974. And from there, then what we've done is that we've actually you know, incorporated the, the different support networks to ensure that you know, the exploitation of oil and gas uh, uh, reserves are done in, a, I would say, in a, in a sustainable you know, and, a, and, a, and a predictable way, if you like. So, uh, because of that, you know, uh, we have always benchmarked against international standards as to how we should actually develop our oil and gas assets, uh, and also, you know, to plant up, uh, and then if you go a bit further into, say, the energy assets, for example, like uh, on power generation and so on and so forth. So we keep in step, I think, you know, with the various um, uh, developments that's going on uh, in, uh, in other countries. So we, we also have solar farms, you know, we, 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 um, we try to, uh, uh, what do you call that, encourage, uh, you know, um, renewable energies, we, we, we also have uh, platforms where now the government, for example, is giving incentive for hybrid cars. And so, you know, I think because of all that uh, thought that we actually put in terms of uh, our oil and gas uh, uh, policies, procedures. So from that perspective, I think we, we are quite an attractive con- uh, country in that respect. You know, we, we, we facilitate. 
in cases where we feel that we need to subsidize, we even subsidize. And that's what we've done in the past, you know, for gas subsidies and so on and so forth. But now that oil and gas prices have gone down, so we've removed the subsidies. So hopefully when we, let's say if the price goes up, then the populace, you know, the people, the population can actually then uh, more or less adjust to, a, to a, an environment where we do not need subsidies.